Hi, my name is Greg Caparaso. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through creating your first Chime 2 plugin. This is gonna rely on a resource called Developing with Chime 2, which you can find at develop.chime2.org. I have the front page of it pulled up here. The things that you'll need to follow along with this tutorial are a Chime 2 development environment, which I'll walk you through setting up first, and this, uh, this web page and an internet connection. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do after navigating to develop.chime2.org is I'm going to set up my development environment. And so you'll see this box right up here. Um, that's gonna take me to another page in this Jupyter book. Um, now, I already have these prerequisites installed, and so this requires Miniconda, which you would have used in the past to install Chime 2, um, and then it uh, uses wget, which will help you download files. Um, so I'm running on a Mac OS with an Apple Silicon chip, and so I'm going to select that um, from this box over here. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm creating a Chime 2 development environment using the tiny distribution, the Chime 2 tiny distribution. So I'm going to copy all that, and you can see when I do that, I get some feedback that tells me that I copied the text from that box. I'm going to go over to my terminal, and I'm just going to paste that in. And this is just going to run for a few seconds while it downloads and installs the development environment. While it's doing that, let me take a minute to show you around developing with Chime 2. So developing with Chime 2 is a Jupyter book, and as of this recording on April 17th, 2024, it's still in very active development status. The most useful content that you'll find, or I should say the most complete content that you'll find in here will be the plugin development tutorial. And so you can see here, tutorial, a step-by-step -step guide to building your first Chime 2 plugin. That's where we're gonna start today. Developing Chime 2 is written uh, based on the Diataxis framework for creating technical documentation. What that means for you is that you can expect the book to be broken into different chapters um, that are either tutorials, how-to guides, explanations, or references. Uh, tutorials will provide a guided exploration of a topic for learning. A how-to guide is gonna provide step-by-step -step instructions on accomplishing a specific task. Explanations provide background information on understanding a specific topic and reference provides reference material. You'll also find that the book is broken down into different segments depending on what aspect of Chime 2 development you're interested in. So if you're interested in building Chime 2 plugins, you really only care about the plugin development or the plugin part of this book. And if I expand that, you'll see that I'll find tutorials, how-to guides, explanations, and references. If you're interested in building Chime 2 interfaces, you only need to focus on the interface section. Um, and you can see that this is in an earlier stage of development. Um, so at this point, um, like I mentioned before, the plugin development is the real focus of this book, but it's continuing to expand um, and it should be getting more complete every day. Okay, so if I switch back to my terminal, I can see that my Chime 2 Conda environment has activated. Um, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that, or I'm sorry, my Chime 2 development environment has installed. Um, and so now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna activate that and I'm gonna call Chime Info. Um, when I do that, you see that I get some information about the versions of Python and the versions of Chime 2 that are installed. Now I'm gonna jump into this tutorial um, and you should take some time and read all of this content, but I'm just gonna quickly walk you through creating your plugin from a template. The first thing you'll need to do, that, uh, to, do to do this is install the cookie cutter tool. Um, I'm just gonna copy and paste that command. That's gonna use pip to install cookie cutter. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is copy this cookie cutter command, run that, and what this is doing is it's downloading a um, template, uh, or what's known as a cookie cutter template from GitHub. 
Um, and it is um, going to then prompt me for some information that it will use to create my plugin from this template. And so you will see at this time, there's eight questions that'll be asked. Um, and so I'm just gonna go through these. I'm gonna call my plugin Q2 Greg. Um, the module name, which is a Python identifier, is then gonna be Q2 underscore Greg. Um, and then the plugin name, which is usually a shortened version of the package name, is just going to be Greg. The author name, the author email, um, plugin website, I'll just put my lab website in there. Um, a longer description, this is a and a shorter description. So that um, is all the questions that are asked. And now I can CD into this directory. Um, and I can see that I have some template files for this plugin. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to install my plugin. And so I'm going to copy this make dev command. I'm going to run that. And it's telling me that it successfully, it successfully installed Q2 Greg. Um, then I'm going to run Chime Dev Refresh Cache. If you've done any Chime 2 plugin development, you have no doubt run into that command before. That is just letting the command line interface know that something has changed in this deployment. Um, and then I'm going to run Chime Info. And you'll recall I did that just a minute ago. Um, you'll see now, if you compare what I had before, um, uh, to, compared to what we had before, there's a new plugin here called Greg. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run the unit tests for this plugin, and I'm going to do that by calling make test. This will take just a couple of seconds to run, and you can see that two tests passed. Um, now, as part of this plugin, um, I include a demo action. And so if I call chime greg dash dash help, um, you'll see that there's an action in here called duplicate table. And so let me call duplicate table dash dash help. And you'll see the help text that's associated with this. Now this is a pretty silly little action. All it does is it takes a feature table as input and it creates a new feature table as output. So just a simple copy of that. You'll want to delete this action from your plugin, but it's a good way to get started. Um, so again, I'll just call chime info and I'll see that I have my plugin. Um, the, that basically wraps it up for creating this first plugin. Um, if we take a look um, at this directory, I'll have to apologize for my dog, who is apparently not very enthusiastic about this video. Uh, if I open the file explorer there, I'll see that I have this Q2 Greg plugin directory. Um, there's a readme that gets stubbed out in here that has some information um, that we were prompted for in the beginning. Um, and then a lot of that information also ends up in the uh, plugin setup.py file. I won't spend time going through this in detail in this book or uh, in this video, but if you go through the tutorial, um, what that will do is it'll follow along from what we just did to creating a first real method. So we'll replace that duplicate action. Um, then we'll add a first visualizer. Then we'll define a new artifact class. And so that includes a semantic type, a transformer, and a, uh, a couple of formats. Then we add some usage examples. We add another transformer. We create a first pipeline. Um, and then that's where this wraps up at the moment. But like I said, this is a work in progress. So you can expect more content soon. Okay, I hope this helps you get started with Chime 2 plugin development. As you jump in, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us in the developer discussion on the Chime 2 forum. Thanks so much and happy developing.